uh, today's session is a very important one. And uh, the theme is something that made a big, big difference to me. So the, the topic today is that creating anything or everything is just a game. Okay. And, and, and that's it. it. It's simply just a game. Now, now for me, uh, throughout my, my journey of, of trying to create success or create results, let's call it, or something, something new, I, I had a bit of a bumpy ride where some things I'd be able to create and other things just felt like a complete struggle. And, and then I would force myself with willpower and, and motivation to, to get out there and, and to make it happen. And I'd create some results, but I would find myself after creating a few results, a little bit, you know, with a question mark, like what does it does, what's the point? You know, like, okay, yep, I can go out there and maybe create some more money or, you know, do this or start it. But, but, but does it really make a difference? Does it really even matter? Does it, does it really? And I remember thinking, so they go, what's the point? I mean, I'm just a, a, a speck of stardust floating on a rock, spinning around, hurling through space. And at some point I won't be here. And, and, and you know, what really matters, you know, like, you know, and, and I remember going, what really matters? And, and, uh, and I sat with that and I really battled with this for quite a while, actually, is like, does it even really matter? I mean, at any moment, a, an asteroid could just come and smash smash the whole world to, to pieces well not in every moment would, would know it's coming for a while but there could be an earthquake or a tidal wave like Duh. yeah so so i sat there and I, and I just you know so i kind of just i did what i thought i had to do and i stayed in it and you know i'd have exciting times and creations but 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 there was there was always something missing and, and i remember it, it got to a point and i'd made quite a lot of money at this point and uh, and that because that was a big thing to me, and, and I'd done that. And I, I was talking, I was talking with a coach actually, and uh, and she said to me, she said, Chris, why don't you just play? I said, What do you mean? She goes, Why don't you just play? And I, I kind of, uh, you know, kind of kind of funny to admit it, but I was like, Why the heck would I want to play? Like, what's the point of that? Like. And she goes, well, you know, just, just play, just, just have fun. I was like, fun, like, uh, you know, and, and I couldn't wrap my head around it because I was in such a mindset that everything I had to do had to have meaning and purpose and, and leave a legacy and, you know, be serious and that, you know, I had to, everything was like, and she said, why don't you just play? And she looked at me, she goes, when was the last time you just played? When you just played it? And, and it was strange. And, and maybe there's some people here that can relate is I couldn't remember when I just played. I, remember, uh, I wasn't good at holidays. I'd, get, I'd sit there, you know, pretending to holiday because it was what I was, should do or supposed to do. I, I, and I'd read books that were serious. I wouldn't read fiction. Uh, I didn't. I didn't play. I didn't have joy. I, when did, what, what, isn't that what kids do? And, and it, was, it was interesting. And, and so she challenged me. She said, well, learn how to play. She goes, what do you got to lose? Learn how to play. Learn how to do it. And, uh, and, and it, was so, it was so interesting because... Once I shifted my orientation to the same results, when I shifted it into it being a game and playing, it was so, so such a revelation. It was such, when I stopped the business being this big stressful thing and the money I need to make big and stressful and that I had to be a certain weight and everything being so serious. And when, when I shifted it to play and that I was gonna make it a game, even the frustrating times were joy because I was no longer in this have to or should or obligation. I shifted it. So it's the same thing, same frustration, same challenges, same growth, same focus. But instead of seeing it as something serious that I had to do, it became a game. And this is our challenge today. And I want to share it with you. Once everything became a game, I was able to relate to it differently. I didn't get annoyed if it wasn't going my way because it was all just part of the game. I didn't get I didn't get myself into any sort of challenge. It's just like, well, I want it to be this way, and I'm playing a game. And, and I remember a business coach. He said to me, he "Goes, Chris, uh, business is just an intellectual sport that you can play until you turn your toes up. It's just an intellectual sport." And uh, I I'd never been more excited about a comment ever. I was like, "An intellectual sport I can play for the rest of my life. That sounds amazing." And, and it was like it all happened at the same time that it became a game. And so, so there are many, there are many things that you can do when you want to create. 
And there's many different myths out there about your life and how important you are. And, and if you're an intellectual thinker and you actually look at it, the more that you examine it, the more that you actually realize that, uh, you, you know, it, it, you're not that, we're not that important, <laughs> you know, and uh, we're just one, you know, 80 to 120 year point of perspective uh, in the billions of years of human history and the trillions of years of, 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 uh, of, of the way the universe has been. It's, and, and you look at it, and you go, well, gosh, so what is the point? Is, does, does anyone really going to remember anything or, or whatever? And it's so interesting. Once you actually realize that, then you just come to this conclusion that most of the things that we think are super important aren't actually that important. <laughs> They're not actually that important. They're important to you. They could be important, but uh, look back at them in 10 years, you're going to forget it, you see, isn't it? And if you look back on most of your worries and challenges and things, and if you, if you think about what was I worried 10 years ago, why was I even worried about that? So, so isn't it true? Isn't it true? You look back and you go, oh, I don't even know why I was worried about that. It's even just a few weeks. But in the moment, we can get ourselves so tied up in it. And so, so here's the premise for today is what if, you could orient to all of the things you're creating, a healthy body, magical transformation, uh, you know, a miracle healing, uh, making more money, starting a business, uh, growing a, a, a new relationship, building a family. What if you could relate to all of that as it's just a big fun game? How, how would that feel? See, uh, that, that, that it'd be very different, different to, to how, and just and let's answer this properly. If you were to orient it like it was a game, how different would it be to how you're orienting currently? It'd be interesting. Well, just, to, just to, I'm just here to play a game, and that's the result I want to create. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create that, like, but I'm gonna orient like it's a game. There's a game I'm playing now. In order to play the game, any game, you need to know the rules. You need to know the rules. True, because because uh, it's uh, you know one of the silliest things that someone can do is get super enthusiastic and motivated and run the wrong way. You know that 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 doesn't help at all. You know, and, and another thing that's silly is is trying to play a game without knowing the rules. And, and so I want to talk about some of the rules because a lot of times there are many myths that are um, propagated uh, out there when it comes to, to creation. So let's talk about uh, some of these myths or rules. First one, hard work creates success. Uh, I, I think this is something that, that many of us have been told, but the, but the truth is we all know someone that worked hard and, and didn't get the results. And then someone who didn't work at all and uh, was able to just with you know natural talents just just get the results and so it's not necessary that hard work uh, gets the results it's actually you know doing the correct work uh, or taking the correct action again if you do hard work in the wrong direction you just get lost faster uh, the next thing people say is well, well you know true manifestation you've got to be talented uh, I don't know about you but I know many people who are less talented than me that have created things that I wish I could create and I go wow that, that they're not, they don't even understand it how the heck have they done that so, so I don't think that it's uh, necessarily uh, uh, talent. Uh, some people say it's luck, you know, uh, it's luck. And, and I think that that luck is actually quite unfulfilling, personally. I think luck can happen. You can luckily just get given something. But I think it's quite unfulfilling if you're just luckily born into a family that that just just turns, that gives you what you want, you know, all the money in the world, or you, you, you just happen to stumble across something. Things like, oh, well, I got it, but uh, I didn't actually get to manifest or create it. In my opinion, uh, and from my experience, the, the most joyful things in life have been when I've actually created it and I know that, that I had to, uh, that I did it. Uh, what about vibration? We've all been told there's the, that, you know, we have to get into a certain vibration uh, in order to, to manifest creation. So, you know, I've got to be in a certain, uh, a certain vibe uh, for it. And, uh, and that, that's really interesting. The only vibration that you need to be in is be able to receive that which you want to, to have, which means you, you be it to see it. There's no one set vibration for that though. If 10 people all want a, a true miracle healing, all 10 are going to have a different, a different uh, way of tuning into that, that reality because it's a, they're a different, they already are a different vibration. They already are different themselves. Another thing that I've heard many times is, you know, um, you have to believe it. You know, you have to believe it. In fact, Wayne Dyer wrote a book, Believe It to See It, which obviously I uh, uh, innovated on to be it to see it. But, uh, you know, believe it to see it. 
and and this idea that you must believe is is something that it's it's nearly like blasphemy for me to suggest you don't have to believe to see it you actually just have to take the correct action you know you don't, you don't have to believe and, and uh, you don't have to believe that it's necessarily going to work as long as you take the correct action you you know then you take the action it will happen you know you, you don't have to believe and and that's so interesting uh, that's actually quite something and the one of the things uh that uh the, one of the examples i give with this is when i work out with my personal trainer you know I, I get to like whatever rep it is and I'm pushing the bar and I think I can't do any more. And he goes, do one more. And I go, and I get one more out, you know, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> I didn't believe it. And uh, someone's just, it depends what you're going after. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Give me an example where you, you have to, you have to believe you just got to take the right action. You can have doubt and still take the right action. Can't you? You can have doubt that it will work, still take the right action, and you can prove yourself wrong. Is there anyone here that hasn't proved themselves wrong? See, proves so wrong. Oh, wow, I didn't think it would work, and it did. So you don't necessarily have to believe. And, and it's interesting because a lot of these ideas can, can become self, uh, self-fulfilling prophecies. And we, we have to try to have all these perfect beliefs, all these perfect things, and, and it simply just doesn't work. And when you're trying to play the game and you've got all these different rules, You've got all of these rules, you, you, you know, that you think are the right rules. You're not able to play the game. Does that make sense? It's very interesting. So, so here's another one is uh, be a good person, do good, and everything will come to you. You know, be, just be good. Again, uh, many of us have, have attempted this, including myself, uh, is we've just been good. We're good people. And we, we don't know why. Well, I'm, I'm a good person. Why is it that um, I don't get the right job? Why is it I get passed up for the promotion? I'm good, you know. And, uh, or, you know, hey, I've helped so many people. Why is no one helping me? And, and it's, it's this weird idea that if I be good, then everyone will just know what it is that I want to receive. <laughs> it's like, no, the way to, to, to receive is to first choose it, to then, you know, act and then receive, you know, it has nothing to do with being good. And it's, it always bugs people. They're like, why does that person have so much money? They're a bad person. And it's like, well, money doesn't care whether you're good or bad. It cares. It, it doesn't care about anything. It's just a measurement. Does that make sense? And, and so there's this, that, that's another rule or idea. So I, I've talked about hard work, talent, luck, vibration, um, you know, self-belief, be good. Uh, and all of them, you know, the half truths, aren't they? Can we all agree these are like half truths? Like there's an element to them that it's like, oh yeah, there's something there, but it's not a set in stone. Like that's that's true. They're all half truths, and be very, very, very careful of the half wise. Very careful. You know, the secret is another one where it's a it's a half truth. It's a complete half truth that there's a psychic trick that you can trick the universe into giving everything what you want. It's like, well, not really. I mean, it's half of it. You, you do need to do that. You do need to get into the right mind and, and imagine it before it happens and condition your unconscious. But then you also need to take the action to, to have it. So it's a, it's a half truth. And half truths are dangerous. Uh, the next thing is, is if you just know what you want, then everything will flow. This idea of flow, that everything must always flow. This, this is probably just a, is, is just, it, not even a half truth, it's like a quarter truth, is that unless I, unless it's flowing, I can't have it. You see, it must just flow. It must just be easy. It must, I must just, it, it's like most of the time, it doesn't just flow. If you want to create things, it doesn't just flow. There's things you need to overcome. It doesn't, it doesn't just all just open up. You know, we have these grandiose kind of narcissistic ideas that we're going to open up to the world and we're going to tune into it. It's going to turn up and say, here's everything you ever want. And here it is again. And you just walk down going, thank you. There's the relationship of my dreams, the body I always wanted. There's all the money I could think of. There's all the respect and love and admiration. And there's the how. Yes. And we just sort of walk through it. It's just not true. It doesn't just flow. Even when you get into the field and you recode your personal resistance, there's resistance in the world, which you must overcome and figure out. So it's, it's interesting. Then there's the whole positivity myth, isn't it? There's a positivity myth that says, um, you must be positive uh, to manifest. 
isn't it true? It, it must be positive to manifest, uh, which is, is probably the most misguided thing in the whole world. Being positive feels good. Why wouldn't you want to be positive? I, I like, I'm a really positive person. Be positive. True? Pos but, but the idea that if you're positive, then, uh, then you will uh, somehow, some things will show up for you is untrue. Now, there is science that say optimists do end up manifesting more. But I don't think it's because they're optimists. I think it's because that they take the action. There has been some absolutely amazing, uh, you know, negative creators out there who, who, who are pessimists or skeptics. And uh, then there's been some serious optimists. And I'm sure you guys all know a crazy optimist who always has a different idea and can never actually manifest. But everything looks like the, the best idea all the time. Give me a yes, actually, in the chat box. If you know someone who's so optimistic about everything all the time, but it's been years that they've been talking about these different ideas and nothing's really happening. It's always the next diet is the right one. And it's amazing. And it's awesome. And it's all going to work out. <laughs> Positivity is a great thing, but it doesn't actually belong in the conversation of manifestation. Uh, the, the next thing is that uh, you can uh, use affirmations you can use affirmations to, to bash your brain into thinking a certain way. You see, I love money. Money loves me. I love money. Money loves me. And the idea that if you say it enough times, um, then you're different. Not knowing that there's a silent instruction that you're giving. Only a person who has a problem with money would, would sing that and walk around with it. Because, uh, you know, and this is funny, I never walked into a, a multimillionaire's house and seen affirmations up on their wall that, that talk about money. It's, uh, it's just not how it is. It's just not how it is. Uh, I got two more for you, but who's enjoying some of these? They're quite funny to think about. When you actually look at them rationally, you go, I can see some of the truth in there, but I can also see the hole in it too. Does that make sense? And, and so they're, they're not entirely untrue. But they're not entirely accurate either. And they, they get people caught up because people see them as these robust truths. You know, they say that's, and, and it's, it's just, it's simply not when you, when you actually have uh, an analytical mind and you look at it. So the next one is that, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. And so that, that must not have been for me. It must, just must not have been in the stars. It just can't be right. And this also goes along, it has a sister or it has a brother or a cousin, which is, well, I was thinking about it and then it showed up. So then it must be. And this is a, this is when we give the power outside of ourselves to the, the universe is, is somehow uh, deciding for us when things are to be and not to be rather than us going, well, I'm getting good signs and I'm choosing to make it happen. You see the difference? And, and I see a lot of people, they, they see a, a sign or, oh my God, every six weeks it's Mercury retrograde and they can't do anything for that time. It's like the power is completely given away. It, it, either, it has to be, or it has to always have synchronicity. They can't just create, there has to be something else that tells them if it's right or wrong. Hey, it had, there has to be something telling me whether it's right or wrong. And if it does, well, I can't ignore the signs. I can't ignore the tea leaves. And, and the last one uh, that I've got for you today, which I think is fun, and these are, this is no extensive list. This is just things that I wrote down today, is that you need to heal your past in order to have a brighter future. And, uh, and, and it's, a, it's actually a little, uh, 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 can waste a lot of time trying to heal the past or trying to have therapy in the past, because the truth is the past is gone. And uh, the only thing you could do is actually just let it go and learn from it. And, uh, and I know that's what it's meant to mean when you say heal the past. However, many people spend way too much time bringing up all this stuff about the past and thinking that if they bring it up and try to process it for 10, 20 years, that it will finally make a different future when in fact, you actually have the power to let it go. You know, yeah, she have the power to go. Anyway, uh, just some things that, that, are, that are fun. So let's talk about the rules of the game of, of what I figured out and, and what's really interesting. So if you want to play a game uh, of creation, you need to know the rules. So those are some rules that, that I personally have found to not be entirely accurate. And, uh, and so here are some that I think are very, very accurate. There's, there's five uh, steps in order to, 
to, to manifest. The, the first one is you must choose. You must choose what it is that you want to create. You, you must choose. You get to choose. And, it, and, and you can't create everything in life, but you can create anything. Okay, you, you can't create everything, but uh, everything, but you, you can create anything you choose. And so the idea is, is if you're sitting down at a, a restaurant and, and you're at, a, at the universal restaurant and you can eat any food on the planet, there's every chef that ever existed there. You simply can't enjoy 20, 30, 40,000 different meals. You must choose the ones you're going to enjoy. And, and that's what life's like. You, you, can be, you can choose to be anything, but you can't do everything. You can't do everything because you can't enjoy it, which is part of doing it. Does this make sense? Give me a yes if that makes sense. Get some engagement. Does that make sense? You can do any of it, but you can't do all of it because you, you're not able to enjoy all of it in one lifetime. So you must, you must choose. And, and it's obvious, you don't want to experience anger and sadness. You don't want to, so you've got to choose what you want to experience. So, so the first thing is you, you must choose. The, the second is you must teach your unconscious, you must teach your unconscious uh, that it's safe to receive that. And this is where all these ideas of, of creating imagery in your mind come from or, or feeling it or vibration or being it to see it or shift. All of the belief shifting, all of this affirmations, okay, all of it are attempts to have your unconscious feel safe receiving that result. Isn't it true? You must train your unconscious to feel safe, to feel able to, to be okay with that reality. Most of our unconscious will actually uh, stop us receiving what's easily available. And so the best way to train your unconscious is with emotion, using the emotion of the end result, being it before you see it, going there, experiencing it first. Most people code up realities that, they, that uh, they don't want and then take action to avoid it. For example, let, let's say that someone in childhood uh, it, it has a lot, of, a lot of fear around them. They're real worried about making a mistake. Maybe they learned that making a mistake is really, really, really bad. And, and maybe they saw you know, heaps of stress around mistakes. So then they're an adult and uh, they want to you know, create financial freedom. And there's an opportunity that comes along. But instead of coding up that this opportunity will work out well, they code up a reality where they lose everything and it goes horrible. So they take no action. And then that opportunity you know, turns into something amazing. So they don't take it because their unconscious wasn't able to receive a successful result. You see that. So anyway, that, that, that's number two. Number three, what, what I found is, is that you, you actually must understand where you are. And, you, and create structural tension. So, so choose what you want, really get into the motion, but, but you, must, you must know where you are now. Many people are not in reality. You know, They're not actually looking at how is it right now. In fact, uh, they're too busy either making it sound way worse than it is or way better than it is, but they're not actually saying, you know, this is it right now. And, and that, that is it's really, it's really fascinating the inability for us to know where we are on the journey to what we're creating. You know, if, if I ask most people, okay, so, so what's the, you know, what's not working well in your life? The way that they typically answer it is they, they don't tell me what's not working well. They tell me the gap between what they want and where they are. That's what they tell me. They say, well, this isn't right rather than they tell me the symptom, not the cause. And so the third thing is understanding the cause, you know? So, so I, whenever we do our third step, and this is some coaching for a lot of you, I say, so what do you want? How does it feel? Where are you now? And most people say, well, I'm frustrated. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And, and they don't actually have a pragmatic view of, of what there's actually now. Instead of saying what they should say is, I haven't found a way uh, to go there. I don't have enough time. I'm procrastinating. They're not pragmatic. Instead, they say, well, I'm frustrated with my results, or I'm pissed off, or I'm heartbroken, or I'm this. So they're saying, I've been dating the wrong people, you see, or I'm now, I'm divorced. They don't get clear on current reality enough. 
And it, it's, it's a really big part of, uh, of the structure. The fourth thing, the fourth thing is to know that if you try, well, it, well, it, it's to recode, right? The, the fourth thing is to know that if you try to fix yourself from the perspective of fixing or improving yourself will make a difference, you just teach your unconscious that you, you, you know, you're broken. So the, the fourth thing is to actually realize that you are super conscious. You are so much more than this limited identity with a name and a face and a, a birth date and, uh, and parents and kids. You're so much bigger than that. And, and that's, that's where this whole idea of game and play is going to come in in just a second, because when you realize that you're actually a heck of a lot more than just this name and this identity and this unconscious blueprint, when you realize you're more than that, you, you realize you, you actually have the ability to shift and become anything now, right now. And therefore, your natural ability is more than enough. How many times in life do we actually allow our natural ability to figure it out? You know, we actually say, I'm going to figure, I, I, I can figure this out. I know we don't. We, and of course, you want to seek out mentors and coaches and these things, but actually to realize I actually have a connection to everything else that exists and I can figure it out. I can do it. So once you, once you realize that's step four, so, well, the fourth step is to realize you're, you're super conscious. You don't need to hold on to limitations because they were just something you picked up along this life journey. You're actually, you're actually uh, super conscious. And the, the last step was well, the fifth step. Well, the last, the last thing is to know that you must take action. You must, you must take action. It, you must follow through. You must follow through. If you think you can sit back and just uh, close your eyes and blink a few times like, uh, like a witch or a wizard and uh, a healthy body will just turn up, it's not true. You must take the action. You must put the right food in your body. You must eat the right nutrients. You must exercise at the gym if that's part of it. You, you know, if you, if you want to make sales, you must ask people to buy from you. You know what I'm saying? Like there is an action. There's always an action. That's because life is an action sport. You first create it in the invisible, you bring it in. And these five steps are the rules. So the rules are, number one, you must choose. Number two, you must feel it in advance. You must teach your unconscious that it's safe to have that by conditioning it, by feeling it. Number three, you must get clear on where you are now, what actually must, what you must do and where you are now. Four, you're super conscious. You can recode any limitation. You don't have a limitation that's stuck to you. Your brain has neuroplasticity. It has the ability to shift. Epigenetics shows that your, your genes can change. You are a quantum particle floating on a wave of consciousness that you can tune into. And lastly, action. The correct action uh, turns into results. And, and these are the five steps of our program. And, and maybe some will chuck them in for you here. Uh, you know, choose. Uh, emotional the end result, structural tension, unplug and recode and take action. Th these are our five steps. And these are the rules of the game. These are the rules. These are the rules. Who agrees that these are so, so, some really good rules and that the, these are what's behind, these are what's behind a lot of these things that we've been told about, you know, be positive or get in the right vibration. Basically is, is tune in, get into the emotion of what you're wanting to create. You see, you must have goals. It's choosing, you know, you must follow through. You must hustle. You must do hard work. Well, that's all just taking the correct action. So, so it's, it's all there. And these five steps will help you create absolutely anything. And it's very, very, very important that, uh, that the way that you orient yourself first makes a big difference. So if, those, if that choice or that end result is this big serious thing, then the way that you orient to it is from a place of already all of, of limitation. Say that again. If you orient to what you're creating as this big, serious, intense thing, 
you're already saying that it's that you're limited compared to it. But if you orient to it, that it's just this game that you, a much bigger consciousness, are just choosing to figure out how to manifest. Isn't that different? And I'll, I'll give you an example. For me, it's in business. I thought, you know, I'm going to build this $100 million company. And it was serious and intense. And I got to figure it out. And then I realized that I was just making myself small compared to it. So I'm going to change all these lives. I'm going to help thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not millions of people. I'm going to do this. And, this. and it was intense and big. And then if I change and I just said, you know what? I'm going to play a game. And the game is, how can I create? the biggest company possible that impacts the most amount of people with having a huge amount of fun. And I changed that game. Now, if you feel into it yourself, use your own intuition, feel those two games. One, I'm going to do this intense, important thing that's going to have legacy. When it was that, Chris, I was getting nowhere. When it was intense and big and serious, I was getting nowhere. I was getting nowhere. I took it all too seriously. And I couldn't get anywhere because it was so big and overwhelming and stressful. When it got shifted to a game, I started telling my team all the time, whatever goal we had, I said, oh, it's not enough. They'd say, oh, hey, Chris, I just did $10,000 in sales this morning. And I'd go, oh, it's not enough. We hit a million dollars in a month. And they'd go, we did a million dollars. Oh, that's great. Nah, not, even, not even enough. And I'd cr I created these jokes and I stopped taking it so seriously. Oh, me, what have got? I can't believe it. Yes, we, we did 60,000 book sales. Oh, I can't believe it. And it But now it's just a fun game. It's like 60,000. That's not enough. We're going for a million. Let's go. Let's play a fun game. And when we shifted, we shifted the energy into it being a fun game. Everything shifted. Everything shifted. Now, just sit with that for a second. What are you getting from for this for you? What are you taking away from this?